Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. European aircraft maker Airbus Military has signed an important new contract with South Africa's Aerosud. Keith Campbell reports. The new contract means that Aerosud will manufacture the fuselage linings, cockpit linings, galleys and wingtips of the A400M airlifter for the entire lifetime of the aircraft program. Airbus Vice President International Cooperation, Simon Ward, explains Airbus's view of the contract. From a perspective of Airbus, um, what's, what's really important to understand is that this is a contract that was done not as a, a in, in repayment for an acquisition. It's not a, a program that is linked to any acquisition. It was done as a global um, bidding process where Aerosud was bidding against top flight companies from around Europe, from around the US, and, and companies that are very, very well established in this field. And Aerosud has come into composite quite young. It, it's very recent. It's driven a niche technology around composite that it has today, and it has managed to prove competitive on a global market. And it changes the perception for a lot of Europeans when they see an African company being globally competitive at the very top flight of technology. This was a big step for, for Aerosud. On the A400M program was a big change in our relationship with Aerosud. Up until the A400M program, we've been doing what we call build to print. So they, they were given the drawings, they were pretty much given the process, and they just replicated that process. With A400M, Aerosud became responsible for the design, for the manufacture, for the manufacturing engineering, developing all the process, the, the complete view of, of the product. Um, did we have any doubt? Um, no more so than I think any other supplier. Whenever you develop a new program and whenever you start a relationship, clearly there's, there's always a risk, it, it doesn't work. Um, and it has been a tough, tough time doing the A400M program. You know, everybody knows the A400M program is, is a little bit late, it's faced design challenges, it's fairly new technology in everything that it does, and Aerosuds is new technology as well. So, you know, what I can say is, has it been difficult? Yes, it's been difficult, but no more so than, than a lot of other suppliers that are on the A400M program. And, and a new aircraft program is always challenging. Aerosud Group MD Dr. Paul Pothkieter explains the significance of the deal for his company. I would say, by and large, two very important messages. In the first instance, the fact that where, whereas Airbus could have technically withdrawn, would have been justified to withdraw these packages from South Africa, because as you know, really the participating nations in the program, those were the industries that were supposed to be participating in the program. So the fact that they didn't withdraw the packages, I think is very significant in the context of uh, assuring or giving us the message or the signal that they want to see a longer term relationship with South African industry. The second, as far as I'm concerned from an aerosuit perspective, is the fact that, yes, it was an international open tender bid and it is significant to us, I think, that we could prove that we could be competitive, that we could secure this work in the face of other similar suppliers elsewhere in the global aerospace supply chain. If we look at the maximum production rate of roughly two and a half aircraft per month, that means it's about 30 aircraft per annum. So if we were to be producing at the maximum rate, looking at the orders already more or less secured, give or take a few, we're talking about a six, six, seven year contract already. If we look at the further uh, potential for this aircraft, it could well be 10, 15 years contract. And that's also why it's difficult for us to determine an exact value for the contract. Because clearly, if Airbus are going to be successful in marketing it and selling it, it's going to turn out to be a successful aircraft. That'll extend the, the life, lifetime, uh, life expectancy of the contract and also our production volumes. 
As the potential benefits of biogas come into focus decades after its first introduction, the Southern African Biogas Industry Association is moving to create greater awareness and fast-track the development of a local biogas industry. Natasha Oudendahl has the story. While the South African renewable energy sector has proven to produce 1.9 jobs for every megawatt installed, the biogas industry could turn into a 10 billion industry, stimulating the manufacturing sector with the development of biogas-specific products and services and creating 5 to 10 times the number of jobs that other renewable energy projects do. Sabia chairperson Mark Tippelt, who has his own small-scale biogas plant at his home, highlights the applications of a small-scale and commercial large-scale biogas plant. But as, as one of the renewable sources of energy um, available to us, biogas has got massive comp- uh, potential, especially conf- um, if you compare it to solar, to PV, to hydro. Um, there's multiple benefits coming out of supporting a biogas plant because we're not just producing electricity. Uh, we're running big generators, so there's surplus um, hot water available, thermal energy. So for every 100 kilowatts of electricity produced, we're producing 120 kilowatts of thermal energy. Um, if you look at, um, we turning potentially environmentally hazardous waste, like for instance from an abattoir or from a sewerage work, we're turning that into compost that can go back onto the land. Um, so we, we're doing uh, waste uh, mitigation as well. Talking about mitigation, that's the next benefit because we, we're taking methane out of circulation. If you left those those material out on those wastes out on an, in the environment, it'll produce methane, it'll escape into the atmosphere. We're using the methane. Methane is 22 times more harmful as a greenhouse gas compared to CO2. So if you look at biogas, the entire package that biogas can offer um, makes a lot of sense and it should be supported on a large scale because we've got a lot of waste in South Africa and we've got a huge um, problem with the cost of electricity and the availability of electricity in South Africa. It's applicable both from a very, very small rural application all the way to a massive big 50, 100 million, million rand um, investment in a, on a commercial scale. We believe that the biggest potential in South Africa is where a company owns the, 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 the um, waste that's produced on the premises, they can generate the electricity on the premises and they can use all of that electricity on the premises. That's a win-win situation for everybody. You don't go over the fence, you don't have to sell it or have agreements with ESCOM or an offtake agreement or whatever the case might be. It gets consumed on site um, and it alleviates the waste, as I mentioned, the waste and um, as well as make that electricity available for ESCOM to use elsewhere. And rural applications got massive potential in South Africa because as we know there's a lot of areas in South Africa where we know ESCOM is not going to get to in the next uh, X number of years but each one of those communities has got access to organic waste so they got crawl manure you know whatever animal manure there is food waste um, and each one of those communities or little um, um, villages can produce biogas by means of a digester um, it can use cooking uh, you know produce cooking gas and the digester is a compost so they can grow vegetables and be- and, and in, um, you know add to the food security Other news making headlines this week, Paramount Trailers lifts its capacity with a 150 million rand investment and metering specialist Census Metering Systems offers local municipalities a water loss solution. Local commercial trailer manufacturer Paramount Trailers last month unveiled its new 75,000 square meter manufacturing facility in Midval, Johannesburg, which has expanded the company's production capacity from 40 to more than 250 trailers a month. The capital expenditures was 150 million rand on the product on the project itself, with an extra 30 million rand on machinery and equipment. The facilities are now 75,000 square meters of land, 25,000 square meters of factory area and 2,000 square meters of office area. While water scarce South Africa requires 670 billion rand for its water sector over the next 10 years to keep up with growing demand, inefficiencies in the country's water systems need to be dealt with as a matter of urgency, says water metering and smart grid specialist Census Metering System South Africa MD Basil Bold. The IPL gives 15 years minimum service life. The second point about it is that it's got an inbuilt RF interface so that whatever information is gathered by the meter is transmitted by radio to a central point. That gives the water utility immediate up to the minute information on 
the reticulation. Where the water is going, it can monitor leakage, it can monitor overusage, it can warn the consumers timelessly. All of that is av available once you've got the communication network available to you. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.